have something to write down with because I'm going to teach you guys something that's very, very important today. And this is something that I've been using. I've been doing everything that I can in my power to give you all the tools that I've been using for the last 10 years so that you guys can experience success immediately. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. So the first thing I want you guys to write down is to not be afraid to fail. I've been paying attention to a lot of the leads that you guys have been getting. A lot of them are looky loose. A lot of them are people that are not ready to make a decision right now. But the reality is if this was easy, a lot more people would sign up and be successful. So you guys have to understand that this task is challenging. And we talked about roadblocks and you guys are going to have them, but we just have to develop the habit so that we can overcome them. Is there a lot of crappy escrows out there? Yes, there is. Is there a lot of crappy clients out there? Yes, there is. But guess what? We're not looking for the perfect client. We're looking for the client that's ready to make a decision right now to purchase or sell their home. Does that make sense? So number one, write down, do not be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of the process. In 2006, I launched a clothing company that I thought was going to take over the world. I read an article on Forbes magazine, and in that Forbes magazine article, Jay-Z sold Rockware for $500 million. And I figured to myself, even if I got one bill out of those 500, I'm straight. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I go in there as an entrepreneur. I launch a clothing company, go all the way to New York, presented in Fashion Week. I hit the biggest roadblock ever because at the funding point, the economy took a turn for the worst and everything collapsed. All of a sudden, my dreams, my investments came crumbling down. And I'm holding there a company that I thought was going to be extremely successful. Did I fail or did I succeed? I fell. But at the same time, I chose that my failure was going to be a success. A lot of you guys have failed at other things in life. And trust me, that for me was a big hit because I was in the middle of negotiations with Macy's. A lot of these larger retailers in the East Coast, and when it came down to funding, they sit and they tell me, Jesse, how is it that you're going to be able to stock our shelves with one size and always have that size consistently so that the customer can purchase? I said, perfect. I'll print it out of my shop. I'll do it myself. Well, to my surprise, it didn't cost a few thousand dollars to print that massive amount of clothing. It costs over half a million dollars just to get it. The SBA at that point, when the economy took a dump, completely stopped lending to everybody. And all of a sudden, everything that I had invested for the last two years, all the time, all the fashion shows, all the stuff that I was doing completely collapsed. There's going to be failure at one point in time in your career. Something's going to happen. The beautiful thing about this industry is that you guys are investing about $15,000, $2,000 to get into a business where you have a much larger rate of return. You don't have to invest $50,000 in a clothing brand. Does that make sense to you guys? You guys have your laptops, your board memberships. That's about $2,000. What's the worst thing that can happen? You yield a high return. So it's all about risk. Another thing is that I want you guys to write down the rejections are completely normal. Rejections happen all the time. It is your responsibility to make a conscious decision if you're going to give up at the first sign of resistance. You have to make that decision. You have to say, well, I called 10 people. Out of 10 people, nine people rejected me. But one person said, maybe. What does it become after that? A numbers game. 10 people say no. <laughs> then one person say, says yes. Then what do you have to do? Double it. Then call 20. Because then two people will say yes. Then call 30. Then three people. And then it becomes a numbers game. Rejections are normal. Write that down. You guys need to be putting this. Because you guys are writing a brand new chapter of your life every single day. And I do not want you guys to focus on the defeat that you experienced in the past. I want you guys to move forward. So here's a third thing that I want you guys to write down. Clients are going to cheat. You have to understand that. It's all, it, it comes down to you how good you want to be. And it's like you engage a customer and that customer is sending you properties, that's a sign for you to understand that you need to go harder on that customer unless you've established that type of relationship because they'll cheat. When I first started in the business and I look at you guys all the time and I'm like, man, what did I do wrong when I first started? I was everybody's Uber and Lyft. I was so busy showing people properties and then they would go write up contracts with somebody else. I would always go and take the customer to go look at the home and do everything that I wanted to. 
And you know what? Was that a sign of failure? Yes, it was. But I did not choose to accept that as a failure. I said, you know what? At least I'm constantly showing homes. I'm in the right direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you guys have to understand, you're going to have to pay that price. So here's four things that I wanted to talk about that have changed my, my life. Your pipeline is your lifetime. Number one, very important to you guys. How many of you guys have weak pipelines right now? Be realistic with yourself. How does it feel to show up to a job that's not 100% sure and your pipeline is weak? Doesn't it? Like sometimes I, I, when my pipeline is weak, I come in here and I'm mentally defeated and you can tell and I can tell with you guys when your pipeline is strong, you guys come in here and your swag is completely different. I'm like, oh, that's an escrow. That's an escrow walk right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because when there's no escrow, you guys are just like, you know what I mean? The weight is very heavy. Learn that your pipeline is your lifeline. Like if you have any financial problems, you're going to solve them by making sure that your pipeline gets full. I had a conversation with Adam. All of a sudden, his pipeline has two deals, and he even knew the GCI. I was all like, that's the lifeline that the pipeline brings. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because we Amen. know. What? Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the pipeline is the lifeline. Number two, the telephone is your power tool. How many of you guys like to work out, or for the people that understand workout? I always hear people that do bench pressing, like, oh, I could bench press like 300 pounds. Your telephone is that power tool that's gonna get you to the success that you need use that power tool use it all the time and again if i go and break down everything that i invested to get to the magic show to get to the agenda show in in new york thousands of dollars your phone cost you what 60 bucks a month no, hundred. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see it. Five lines out. My mom, my sister, everybody, like five hundred bucks a month. Well, the reality is this: it's a very, very small investment yeah. that you guys have to make as a power tool. But you, we don't see it as a power tool. We have it there, and we're like, we don't, we're not using the power tool. And now you have social media. If I was you guys, and you guys are sitting yourself and cutting your schedule short, go out and preview property, send out that feed, and go and post it on your social media. Guys, the worst thing that can happen is somebody's going to show up and be like, why are you so dressed up? Why are you looking at the power? Are you the listing agent? I'm not the listing agent, but I can show you the property. What's, where's your agent? Are you working with an agent? Well, I send them a bunch of properties. He doesn't respond. Scoop. Right there, you slide in. Great, you skirt yep. up. Yep, you go in there, you slide in, and the customer has been working for such a long time to look for a home that guess what? You get them in escrow for a week. And if you're having a hard time really understanding because it's not happening to you, I guarantee if you guys start writing this stuff down, things will become a reality immediately. I've, I've requested several times that you guys start to write down that you guys are in escrow. And right now you guys are learning about your pipeline. So anyway, your, your telephone is a power tool. Here are the three Ps that hold you guys back. Number one is perfection. Too many of you guys are trying to be perfect at, at calling. You guys are trying to be perfect at so many things that it doesn't allow you to move forward. Trying to be perfect creates the second P, which is procrastination. I see you guys procrastinate all the time, but I procrastinate all the time. So I always like, is, is me leading from the top showing procrastination? But you guys need to identify that the problem is there. The procrastination problem is something that we all struggle with. The third P is paralysis. You guys get par paralyzed from analyzing so much from trying to be perfect that you guys get paralyzed and then you get at the end of the day and the end of the day is like 20 calls. When you know you can make 20 calls in one hour, ask yourself this question. If your family was here watching every single move that you made, would they be happy with the results that you're yielding? I know that half of the time they would be like, oh man, Jesse, that's a lot of BS half of that day. <laughs> that's like five hours of BS and two hours of real work. Does that make any sense to you guys? Because we get paralyzed. We get paralyzed and the issue with being paralyzed is that the minute that we get something in our pipeline, since we haven't been using it as a, as the actual lifeline, we're comfortable. We get comfortable and I see it all the time. In every sales environment that I've ever been in, the person that gets at a level of top producing or makes enough money stops all the time. 
If I was to give you guys a $20,000 check, each one of you guys, I guarantee you guys that somehow you guys would start to slack off little by little. It's happened to me too. I have a great month and I've seen it. We should try it though. We should try it. We should give us a check for 20000 and then we'll see. Hey, real time, real time, real time. Yeah, we hey, should try hey, it yeah. on. See? <laughs> that one, right? <laughs> Heard that one loud and clear. Anyway. Let's call it a social experiment. <laughs> Let's make an experiment. I agree with you. So for that paralysis from analysis, do not analyze. Like yesterday, how many of you guys had a bad calling day? I know I did. I got rejected about 32 times. I calculated the rejections because I'm like, every time I got rejected, I'm like, here, here, here. And I'm doing, I'm doing the, uh, some of the calls on the master list just to see what you guys are talking about and to verify that the phone calls are being made. And to my surprise, you guys are calling constantly. So remember we talked about helping yourself out by sharing your own victories, doing something to pump you up. That's good. I would say, hey, we're calling these people and these people are actively responding to us. Is there a lot of looky-loos? Yes, yeah. there is. But that's very normal. I mean, how many people do you know that go into a car dealership to look at their dream car? The salesperson is so committed to going through the whole process. The person doesn't even have a down payment. <laughs> and the credit is like 400 <laughs> like plus <laughs> yeah, they don't even have a job, but they want their dream car. That might be happening in your environment. You got to figure that out. And the only way you're going to figure that out is if you're running through the script well, how properly. Many, how many of us have those friends that send us a link on Zillow, like for text messages, and it's like, Hey, what's the info on this house? It's like, bro, I know you're not gonna buy. You've been with me probably for the last seven years. <laughs> <laughs> still haven't bought. Yeah, or, the, or the notorious customer that's still waiting for the houses to drop, and yeah. it's been like 15 years of yeah. all uphill, so yeah. they're not buying ever. Now's the time to call those people. Now's the time that sellers are doing some good reductions. You just have to be informative. And here's the one thing that I want to wrap up with, and this is my closing. You guys need to get into the habit of making one more call. I'm grabbing my stuff. I'm putting my stuff away. I'm ready to wrap up my day because all of us stop at one point. I'm not going to lie. I don't go all night long. I do respond and I do my work through talking to customers, but you're about to wrap up. It's four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever time you're making a decision to finish. We've talked about numbers in the last few days, correct? Yes. So you do one more call and let's just say you're only working five days out of the week. So what's five times one? Ooh, five. No. Five. <laughs> okay, so let's just say you're working 20 days out of the week. What's one times 20? Come on, some participation. 20. How would 20 more calls every single month sound to you just by making a decision? And your regimen does not have to be a cold call. It could potentially be somebody in your center of influence where you're like, oh, let me make it. And look, I write down the notes all the time. Even though I have my KB core, I have Oscar Aguilar here. I have Paulo Rodriguez. I have Rafael Valencia, Jose Andalona, Antonio Canseco. I, I have all of these numbers that are predetermined so that I can make one more phone call before I leave. You were going to say something. I was going to say uh, what you're saying is right, though, because that's what I did uh, yesterday before leaving. I called uh, Juan Gonzalez and yeah. he filled it up, but he told me I'm committed. If you show me the property and if I like it, I want to start the process. So that, that was one that, because everyone was like rejecting, oh, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. You know what right. I mean? So sometimes you get like discouraged. Yeah, so. so let's just say if you would have been discouraged because of the activity all day long and you would have not made that one more call, you would have completely eliminated your chances to get Mr. Gonzalez into the home that he potentially wants. Right. And that's the power. And that's why I want you guys to continuously write that down. You need to make one more phone call every single day. If you do one more phone call every single day, that's times 30. One, every, one call every day. Even if you're not working Sunday, let me make one more call. Saturday, one more call. That's 30 calls a month. That's a lot of calls. That's a year. That's what, 300 and something phone calls? Some people in real estate can't even make 300 phone calls in their whole career. Does that make any sense to you guys? This is a numbers game. And I want to really wrap it up by telling you guys, your pipeline is your lifeline. Remember that. If your pipeline is weak, guess what? Your confidence sucks. If your confidence sucks, then you're not going to be able to close the client. If you can't close the client, you're not going to be able to generate income for your family. That's so important to me. Number two, telephone is your power tool. Your power tool is your most useful tool. 
pull that power tool out and use it all the time. Number three, the three P's that hold you back are perfectionism, procrastination, and suffering from paralysis because you overanalyze what you're about to do. And if you're struggling with these type of things, I'm here to help you and coach you through the process. And the last thing is one more call. You guys need to make sure that you guys are making a conscious decision and I'm about to grab everything. I got the briefcase. Everything's wrapped up already. I'm about to take it home. And guess what? One more phone call. That one more phone call might be that, hey, yes, Jesse, I need to go show me this house right now. Does that make any sense to you guys?